Thanks for tuning in to the Catch Podcast. Brought to you by Dark Horse Tackle. The best American small business base you've never heard of. Stocked in a monthly box. Use promo code to catch 5 off to save $5 off your first monthly subscription to the box. Here are your hosts, Matt Souders and Brad Hicks. How goes it, Matt? It goes. I'm an idiot. Did you see what I did? Yeah, you forgot to bring us in. Man, why do I keep doing <clears throat> That's like the second week in a row. I know. Well, we it's been a couple weeks since we recorded. I, that is kind of true because we didn't record an episode last week. Yeah. And then Drew backed out on us this week. So, no, I'm just joking. I, was say, I wouldn't say backed out. The dude just like invented a brand new kayak accessory. Well, and he came back from a Caddo Lake Bassmaster tournament, so... Yeah, that's true. He told me before I was, he was like, I'll try, but I can't make any promises. I'm like, I understand, dude. It's not a big deal. Oh, yeah, dude. I would have just not done it. So makes sense. Yeah. But what's new? Uh, Not a whole lot. I went out Sunday. I didn't have the same luck you had. I know we're going to talk about your stuff, too. Yeah, you but... went out Monday, didn't you? I... Or no, I went out Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I went out Tuesday. Um. <laughs> Got one good fish, 16 three quarter, uh, on a mega bass giant dog X. I caught a like five or six more fish. Um, but yeah, man, I just couldn't get them to bite nothing. Yeah. So, but I got them on that, I got them on the top water, and then I got all the other ones on uh, the gobe. Let's gobius. Yeah, I think is like that's the new Ned rig for me. Like, if I'm having a struggle bite, I just throw the gobius and I get bit. It works, man. Yeah, dude. I love it. Good but, little bait. Dude, yeah, I don't, go ahead. I was going to say, I don't know, because I know from the weekend you had, which was insane, I don't know if, because I think I was kind of looking, the nights got a little bit colder, mm -hmm. just a little bit, not by a lot, but just a little bit. And I, I don't know if that was enough to kind of shut them off, because the bite started getting a lot better around noon. Mm -hmm. And I only fished about 145. Um, cause when you go back downstream from that stretch, there's nothing like, I mean, there's fish in there, so, but the water was so low. I don't, they were probably farther up. If I would have spent more time there, I think I would have caught more fish, but, yeah. uh, yeah, they just like all, every fish I hit minus the top water fish that 16 and three quarter had two fish with it or another fish with it when it hit the top water. And then there's one other fish that was small that just cranked it. All the other fish just felt like a real lazy bite. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they just weren't chasing or I was, it's probably just the wrong time, but, but at least I got out. I got my little small mouth fix and I got a decent one. So I'm happy about it. Yeah. That's pretty cool though. I mean, so like I said, we haven't recorded in like two weeks. So I feel like I got a bunch to talk about, man. Like so much has happened since the kayak adventure series. And that seems like forever ago to me. Does it seem like forever ago? To yeah. You? Yeah. I was literally thinking about, I was talking to somebody today. I was like, yeah, like, you know, I went to that last, the broodstock event and that was a while back. And one of them, somebody was like, wasn't that like two weekends ago? I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so it felt, it just feels like it's been a way longer, but it's also weird because we're already at the end of October and it doesn't feel like we went through the month of October this fast. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Like it, it's odd. Like no, dude. Uh, Thanksgiving is literally a month away. I know, dude. That's crazy. It's, it's actually. Just I, I didn't even think about that until just now. That's nuts. Yeah, Thanksgiving's a month away. Christmas is two months away. Yeah, that's crazy. dude. It's so it's so weird. It's just it's uh, this year's been odd. Like it's just ran. Uh, the, the warm weather, dude. It's like <clears throat> makes it feel like it's not fall yet. Well, I guess it, it feels like fall, but. I must say it feels like uh during like the mid afternoon to mid evening it feels like early fall. Yeah. And then the morning like the to like 10 October or something. Yes. Yeah. And then the nights are like late fall cuz yeah. every morning I wake up and I'm cold. Yeah, but it's been chilly in the mornings, man, like mm -hmm. low 30s, high 30s and then which 
I know I've read a few reports from guys way back in the day talking about it. They always said if you get three straight days of cold nights in the fall time, they're going to start their fall feeding pattern. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. as long as long as we don't get any like super warm days again and like kind of breaks up the warm nights, I think we're going to be in the fall bite for a little while. Yeah, I mean, from from what I saw, I think we're in the fall bite for now like it's not going to go away um we don't really have any cool nights i think the coldest night in the next week or the warmest night in the next week next thursday like next weekend we're in the 50s at night but that's just because we have a storm front coming through a southern storm front so it's going to warm up but uh which Which, thank god dude the water was so low i was getting so ticked off yeah we were out there but or when i was out there yeah, but, it's crazy. I told you it was going to be low. Like, it was just as low as it was when we were up there that last time. Yeah, no, I think it was, in all honesty, I think it was a little bit lower. It um, could have been. Yeah, I think it was a little bit lower because there were some spots that I was able to motor up super easy last time. And this time, like, I could still motor up. It was just kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. So. I, well, I think I do. Yeah. It did rain before we went up there last time, I think. So that makes sense. Yeah. But, dude, so. I haven't talked about any of my trips. I had to look at my count, cal- my calendar and look back at my posts. I haven't talked about any of my trips since October 11th, which was two, two weeks ago, three weeks yeah, ago, like 13 two. days ago or something. Yeah. So <clears throat> that was a Friday, I think. Yep. That was a Friday. I got my work done on the computer, uh, went out and it was actually warm that day too. It was, you know, probably 80s if I yeah if right. it was low 80s high 70s like on the cusp yep uh i, I went out there catch i caught a ton of small ones on the mega bass vision 110 so i was like you know what screw this i put it away grabbed the chopo and literally right like 10 minutes after grabbing the chopo i i pound like a 19 and a half 19 three quarters something like that i can't remember the size but he was downstream from the winter hole near fast push water. And that was more towards the middle of the day, I think. So, uh, and then after that, I went back upstream because I wanted to fish the, the seams and stuff again near the fast water. That's upstream from the, winter holes ended up catching another one on the shower blows i haven't posted that video yet but dude freaking destroyed it it was nuts freaking destroyed it it was awesome but he was only in like a foot of water too really yeah that's what's so crazy because you sent you sent the video i think to me um i'm pretty sure you did it was either that or the chopo eat i think it was the shower blows eat that or i watched it on youtube already like on the channel. Oh yeah. I think I did that. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. Cause I knew right where was, that was at. And I was like, man, that's with the water down. That's gotta be like, u- like Uber shallow, like ankle deep. Yep. Um, so for that, that caliber of fish to be sitting there, that's, I mean, there, cause there's push water, not too far away from it. So I could see maybe it was moving, but that's still crazy that it was kind of just sitting in that area hunting. Yeah, and I, I've I've had some success there in the past in the winter time on that side of the river where it's shallow because there is kind of like a little deep drop off there. But yeah, he I, he was literally sitting on that shallow flat just waiting. That's awesome. And yeah, he smacked it. That was cool. So that was fun. Uh, I I learned a little bit about the uh, fall bite though. I know. Jason Myers was saying something about uh, catching fish, fish in faster moving water this time of the year. So I've been kind of targeting that kind of water lately. And sure enough, it's been holding up. So, oh, yeah. Up or downstream from their winter hole, they're going to be near the winter hole. Find the fast water. You're going to find fish. Yeah, that's what I did on Tuesday. Like the, so I caught four, four fish in the same spot. And it was right. So, you know, that the the bank we were talking about, that's got to be a winter hole because of the depth mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then right past that, 
is that where you go up and those trees are all down and it creates that kind of big eddy behind that one big tree. Yep. So there's a bunch of fast moving water right there. And I caught the first one I caught, which I don't know if you watched the video yet or not, but the first one I caught it like right in that eddy. And then I caught the other three throwing a gobius from the fast moving water, letting it hit. And then because there's a bunch of lay down stuff, I let it burn. I burned it out of the fast moving water and just got crushed right when I came out of the fast. So they were sitting right on that seam. Um, yep. And that's that's where I found most of them. A lot of the other ones it was just weird spots like an eddies and like just summer tactics, but they were all smaller fish. Um, yeah, the smaller fish are dumb. They don't know what they're doing yet. <laughs> they just haven't been around long enough yeah. to, you know, they're still to, learning. Yep. I mean, they're still, I think they still instinctively don't know where to go. Like they have yeah. a basic idea of wintering holes, but they haven't. Like I guarantee you this winter, I know one spot I can go and I'll probably catch the same 18 and a three quarter inch fish that I catch every single year <laughs> in the hole. Cause it goes back every year. It's the dirt to dirt fish yeah. that has like half a mouth and there's a deep, a, a deep hole right there. And, Every year in November, you throw right there and he's right there sitting there. Just, I mean, it's so those smaller fish, I just don't think they've picked holes out yet. Yeah. So. And, and it's weird because, like, you'll fish all winter long and you won't catch a small fish. Yeah. You're like, where the heck did the small fish go? Yep. I, must I say mean, it's, they, they just don't have to feed as much, I guess, because they're smaller. Maybe. I don't know. I would almost think they'd have to feed more personally, but I honestly think that, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think the last two winters because I've actively fished the last two with the dry suit. Has it been three? I think it's been three. No, I don't know. But I don't think this, I think the smallest fish I've caught is like a 15 or 15, 16, like in the winter. Yeah. Like I may, I think, actually, I think I caught it like a super dink. It hit a Ned rig and I was like, dude, how are you alive? Like, how are you not frozen? Because it was like seven inches long. But other than that, most of the fish, like I only have one or two fish days, but the worst fish is 15 inches. So yeah, it's always, you know, 15 or bigger. It seems like it's odd, but pretty cool. whatever. Uh, so the, the next day, because I'm just addicted to fishing, I went out again. It was a Saturday, went downtown and I busted another 19 and three quarter on the shower blows. In a winter hole, like a confirmed winter hole, we catch fish out of yep. every year. So that was cool. Ended up catching a pike on the Chad Shad. Had a ton of followers that weekend on the Chad Shad. They just weren't committing, you know. They were just following it and whatever. Yeah, I had. Oh, it was what I told you. They were zooming up to it, and then they just stop and look at it. Yeah, it's almost like a, I, I, like I don't know, territorial or what, but I had three do that i think the biggest he may have been 15 but i was throwing the uh river city bigger glide bait um oh the shad i think no i don't remember what it's called but it's legend? the bigger one no it's not the well no because i have a legend it's not the legend it's gonna bug me now but i was throwing that and i had because the water's so clear right now which i also i mean it's really cool to fish like clear water but it also i just hate it because i have to be a little more like conservative when i'm throwing and you how i'm throwing i have to yeah you have to make longer casts which isn't a huge deal like i've never really cared about that too much um but oh they don't even have it on their website because it's not on a drop right now mm -hmm. but it was one. It's the bigger river city. It's not the the river city. It's not the small one. But I threw that, and I had, like I said, three or four followers. But they were real, like they were real lazy followers. Like even when they saw me, they didn't like bolt away. They just turned around and went back. The biggest I think may have been fifteen, fifteen and a half. Uh, but they followed it. I mean, I was making bomb casts like as far as I could zing it, mm -hmm. and I could stand up and watch. And I, I like I even said it. I was like, "There's a fish fall on that bait," and the bait was still thirty yards away, and you can just see it just gliding with it behind. That's and that was that. It was it was weird. Like, and then I was because I didn't bring my Ned rig. I forced myself not to because I was like, "Dude, I'm not bringing this. I don't want to catch fish on it. I'll just skunk today. I don't care." Like, I don't. I'm tired well, that, of fishing the. the that net. kind of goes in with what we're going to be talking about later today too. So, it does. But yeah, uh, yeah, dude, I had a couple follows and. They just, I just couldn't get any of them to commit. Um, 
which is weird with it being fall time. It was not a it was not a fall bite to me. It was like a like a l- mid to late summer bite. They're just lazy. They're just they were lazy except for that top that one top water fish and then I had like a 9 inch hit the gobia so hard I thought it was like a peacock. <laughs> like it just like it hit it and I and I say in the video like when everyone watches which you're not going to see it till like January but whatever. When <laughs> when it, when it hit and I was like you hit that like a freight train for your size. Like I thought it was massive. I was like at least I got another 16 and it's like a 9 inch fish. Dude, I'd like, be happy like a 16 and 3 quarter. I'd be happy with that. That's that's a good fish. I would no. I'm happy with that one. The fish that hit that goby is like a tank was nine inches long. Oh, and he. I thought like I was like, dude, he's got to be at least a sixteen as I'm fighting it because it was ripping drag a little bit. And you know me, my stratic drag is not loose. Like I horse fish in, yeah. and it was like all you hear is it's pulling a little bit of drag out. I was like, oh, this is a decent fish. And then he came right at me and he went by. I was like, this is, a, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> like I was, is the first time I was like, dude, this smallmouth is gonna be a great burrito. Uh. But, Jeez. but yeah, I want you to t- talk about, yeah, you caught another on a shower blows. That's really cool. Talk about the old stacky stack. Stacky stack. The stack. Oh, day. last weekend. Yeah. So yeah, last weekend, dude, it was weird. Like I ended up putting in at the boat ramp by my house. I fished the middle of the river for a while with a jerk bait and Chad shad. Nothing was happening. So I was like, all right, we'll go upstream get to the freaking discharge, you know, going through the normal motions. I'm like, all right, there's probably not going to be fish here, but might as well cast in here. First cast, I catch like a 14. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Whatever. You know, cast in there a couple more times, pull out another 14, 15 inch. I was like, cool. That's cool. I've never had this happen in this spot. I just keep, I keep casting there. And eventually I, I catch like two more 17s out of there. I'm like, what is going on? This is weird. So I ended up like, you'll see it in the video. Cause I was like, all right, there's no bigger fish here. So I need to move. I need to go find the bigger fish. So I ended up going upstream. Little did I know. Yeah. I ended up going upstream, fishing up there a little bit. And then it's getting towards the end of my trip. I was like, all right, I'm going to head back. I have to, I had to go and do something for work anyway. Mm-hmm. So I, had, I had to get going. I decided to stop back at the discharge. I was like, yeah, let's make a few more casts on freaking fire, dude. Like I probably had 85 inches within like 10, 20 minutes. It was nuts. 19 and three quarter. Like, Oh dude, he hit the jerk sheds. They were all hitting the jerk shed. I mean, like in the fastest part of the water you could, you could cast it in. I'm telling you that spot, it was like that, uh, it was in the summer. Do you remember? Cause it was you and me, we went out and I was throwing that dark corner crank yeah. and I caught like six or seven out of it. Just throwing it up in that fast water. Bam, bam, bam. And then we went back up and we came back down and I caught like four or five more out of it. Like yeah. I, that, that spot is weird. There'll be one day you go up there and you will catch zero fish or maybe like one short and that's it. Yeah. That's and my experience. That's normally how it is, like to the point when we're together or that one day I went by myself, I caught two fish out of it. The videos on our page, I caught two fish out of it and then caught nothing else. And then that that normally we go up, it's like we're here for five minutes and we're like, all right, let's go. We got other stuff we want to do. And it's still like a mile and a half upriver. And we just barely like we barely fish it and we might cast out on the way back and then we leave. And then there's days you'll throw in there. And I know because if you throw in there and get hammered on the first cast just take some time and sit there. There's fish uh, for whatever reason they stack there at different times of the year. It's odd. Yeah. It was weird though, man. I'm like, so there's like a little eddy pocket right next to the fast moving water where it dumps in. And there, I don't know how deep it is there because I can't get there to scan it because it's dangerous, but I'm going to guess it's probably three or four feet at least. Yeah. I honestly thought about, uh, putting some of that multicolored line. Mm Mm-hmm. And throw it and just to see what colors like there so I can see how much feeds out. Or just, you know, being ballsy and running up and well that trying. nineteen and three quarter pulled me into that fast moving water, if you see it in the video. Yeah, dude. I that and he's not joking, it's fast. Like it's sketchy. I had a seventeen and a half on a crankbait pull me into it and I thought I was gonna die. Like it and dude, it rips. It's bad. I could not fish this spot without my Newport NK one eighty pro. Like 
there there's no way. I mean, I could have had a anchor or something, but you don't want to anchor in current. Having Not the that current motor. Yeah, having the motor and just being able to sit there and control with my feet and make cast after cast after cast in this very exact spot, probably three foot by three foot, if that, which is where they were hitting. I would drop it into that little calm pocket and it would sweep into the fast moving water and boom, they'd smack it. Yeah, I mean, it's the same like when me and the NK300 on Tuesday, just sitting in faster water and fishing a seam straight on. You can just sit there. And just yep. keep, you know, just doing your little baby toe taps and it just keeps it going straight and then you're done. Yeah. So that I, I always tell people that I'm like, man, if you don't have a motor, you need to get one for the river. I mean, like controlling with your feet and everything. It's awesome. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I ended up catching quite a few 17s, the 19 and three quarter out of that spot. And then I ended up calling it a day shortly after that, you know. I was satisfied, obviously. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the following day, I think I, I fished three days in a row last weekend. Yeah. Yeah, you did. I you fished Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday because I was butthurt because you kept texting me. You're like, I wish you were out here, man. And I was like, yeah, me too. My life sucks. Well, Saturday was a tougher day. I ended up going way south. And I met with... Uh, one of my new friends, Jared, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I got to see what is. <laughs> Jared Kalinowski, I guess. That's how you pronounce it. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that was his first time on the GMR. He lives out in Washington Courthouse, so he made the hour and a half trip to a spot that I sent him. And uh, we went upstream a couple miles, fished. Yeah, it took us like five hours to get two miles upstream because, you know, we pick apart areas. Yeah. Uh, tougher day. Cop fish, they were all tiny except for one really good one. I don't remember how big he was, but Jerk Shads does it again, man. Dude, Same I thing. don't I don't know what's wrong with me. I I I, I don't know, dude. I, I throw in the Jerk Shads, and it just, I think, so all I had was the four inchers. And yeah, I had I that about the five. See, if I had the five, it'd been fine because I had the regular three yacht EWG weighted swim bait hook from Z Man, the ZWG, and it was just too much hook, I think, because the bait like had no real action. Mm -hmm. I just haven't thrown, and I was throwing on a spinning rod, which I haven't That's done in like I haven't done that in like four years. I throw it all on casting, but I didn't want to bring that, and I was like, I'm gonna force myself to start using the spinning rod again. Uh, so I just need to order another Z man order. I need to order some fives and I need to get like four packs of the sevens mm -hmm. because, Oh, uh, Jeff little, you seen his new video about the rig stinger rig. Yeah. I'm doing that. I'm doing that with just Noctibus hook. Like he did it toward the end. Yep. That's going to be perfect. Cause I mean, I, I want to, I'm, I, I don't know in the winter. I think I'm just going to start targeting bigger fish. Yeah, so I mean, gonna, might as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, because we get skunked anyway. So, yeah. like, what? at least this ties into everything we're gonna be talking about later too. So, <laughs> no. Well, let's take a quick break, and then we're gonna jump into the meat and potatoes of the show. I, I still have to talk about another trip. Brad's gonna talk about another trip, and then we're gonna take a quick break, and we're gonna jump to the meat and potatoes of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, let's see here. The, the tough day on the river. Uh, so Sunday I went out by myself on Sunday. I was actually supposed to float with Creek crawler and, uh, Sean Skidmore, but I, uh, they had a pretty up, good day too. Yeah. I woke up at like five 30 AM and I had a sinus headache. So I texted him. I was like, I am not coming. My head hurts. So went back to sleep, woke up a little bit later, you know, did the whole thing for, I just chill at home for a little bit. And then afternoon came around and I was like, all right, time to go fishing. I feel better. Good choice <laughs> because I went out there again and I, I uh, smashed two more 19s a 19 and a half and a 19 on the Chad shed in the, in the spot Matt was talking about. So it was cool too, because I would sit there and work it. I'd see them shoot up out of the deep water and they would smack it. 
they kept smacking it repeatedly. And you'll you saw in my video on Instagram, I just kept trying. I was like setting the hook. Excuse me, because I thought they had it. And then finally, after they stopped doing that, I kind of gave it like I, I undid the bail. You could hear me unclick my bail, and then I twitched it twice, and he just boom got the whole thing. That was so freaking cool, though. Like for probably 30 minutes there, I had nothing but followers just coming up and smacking it. They weren't hooking up. They are just smacking it. Telling you, you need to get some Ryugi quad hooks. I need to look those up. Ryugi quad hooks, dude. They're now, dude, I know you, so don't get butthurt about the price because they're $10 a pack. But, no. I mean, it's, it comes with two. You get some one-aughts because I'm pretty sure that's what's on yours. Um, on the chats, I'm pretty sure they're one-aughts. I don't think they're twos. Um, uh, I ended up so one of the baits we got out of the Dark Horse box recently, they uh, they had the same size hooks that the Chad Shed has, so I put those hooks on the uh, Chad Shed today. It's those oh, nice potatoes, so yeah, we're Good gonna try too. that. You just gotta remember they're a little bit lighter wire, so yeah. you set the hook too hard, it's gonna bend. But those, yeah, for everyone out there, those Ryugi, guys on me, well. Gamagatsu, well, they can, but the Ryogi quad swivel eyes, or if you don't like to horse the fish, owner ST36s. If you do like to horse the fish, owner ST56s. I like to horse fish, so most of my swim baits have ST56s. And when you set the hook, it's just a heavier hook. So it's a heavier wire, which actually will make your, make your baits sink more, which is what I like. I like sinking baits. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, they're awesome. I like sinking baits too. Yeah. I don't like floating. I mean, I have a couple floaters, uh, swim like big glide baits. Uh, but I, I prefer the sinking style just cause I like working it farther. If I want to, if I want it to be on the top, I'll just work it faster. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I went, I ended up. So after all that happened with the Chad Chad, I went up into that reservoir, you know, Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I started catching fish up there too. I caught a couple of largemouth. Uh, had a pike follow, a big pike. I did the figure eight and he was following it. He kept just nipping at it. I couldn't get him to bite it whole, but I did the figure eight. And he was just, yeah, so cool. Yeah, you just got to keep, keep doing it and then like twitch it as you're doing it and then like can entice a bite. I don't, I only know that because I watch Christine Fisher's YouTube videos. Like yeah. I, I don't, I don't fish for pike. I never have. Uh, if I ever got them, they're a bycatch. Yeah, same here. But I was trying to catch that one. I was using a spinner bait too. You know, doing the figure eight with the spinner bait. They yeah. Just hit him in the head, and he would just laz lazily nip at it. I was like, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. It would have been cool to catch it though. But it would have been. Caught some on uh, top water too. I, I was using that cornerstone uh, big swift thing is freaking loud and it is dope yeah i was about to say big big spooks are awesome um i had the uh oh chopo tied on i actually had the heat and spit an image tied on or spin an image mm -hmm. um but i don't get me wrong they catch fish and i like them but it's kind of the same with the buzz bait. I don't feel when I went out, like I wanted to feel, and this will get into our show too, but I wanted to feel more like I was doing a technique. I didn't want to just cast and reel, cast and reel. Cause I hadn't done top water in a long time, mm -hmm. like actual top water. I know chopos are all top water, but I haven't done real top water, like walking a spook, mm -hmm. a plot, a popper, uh, you know, a Twitch bait, stuff like that. So I, that's why I tied on that, uh, giant dog X that I won in the discount tackle. Oh, the white thing. one? Yeah, the white bone, like the cracked bone one. It was so, dude, sick. it looks awesome. And it got smashed, which was even cooler. Um, and Mega Bass commented on your post. That was cool. They did. They did. That was pretty dope. Um, but uh, yeah, that was really sick. They followed me. It's pretty. I'm did really they really? About it. Yeah, they, well, they did. And then they stopped. So I don't know. Who knows? Like I saw the it was on my followers. I was like, let's go. And then I looked like two hours later because I, like, I don't want to look at it again. And they weren't following me anymore. So whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. They probably pushed the wrong button. They're like, I'm not gonna follow this loser. But uh, <laughs> but like I went. That's why I went out and like. Okay, we'll get into this 
you got any more cool stories to tell about all the giant fish you caught over the weekend? Uh, no, I was going to say the river temperature was 53 at the start of the weekend or Friday, and it got up to 60 Sunday afternoon. So we're in that good time to go fishing. So you guys need to get out there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And for everyone out there, if you want to record while you're on the water, I have this very lightly used GoPro Hero 9 that is for sale. P DM me and we can talk about it. How much? Uh like 120. So I'll give you I'll give you 120. Okay. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. I might be interested in it. Okay, I'm about to say it's got an upgraded battery door so where you can when you plug it in, it's got another little door for the USB C so you can just pop it in there. And the reason I'm selling it is because everyone knows here's my, you know, DGI action three. And then I got a DGI action four. Ba 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 ba. Nope. Yeah. yeah, I kinda I kinda wanna do the double camera deal because I after listening to Jeff Little talk, he said uh uh video engagement is real big when you have different camera angles telling the story. So yeah, I need to put my uh, mount on the front of mine back on, but then I also pick some of these up so people can hear when I'm actually talking. It sounded um, good. I did watch that video you made. Yeah. Cause I like, I, so I mute the, the first fish. There was my overlay because I muted myself. Cause I'm, I don't know how to use them, but other than that I sounded way better. And I like to talk while I'm catching the fish and I don't know, just give some information on it. So, but yeah, the cameras, worked out dope sweet all right uh yeah i don't have anything else so we can take a short break and then we can get into the show let's Sound do it bio power offers lithium ion phosphate batteries ideal for everything from electric vehicles to homes energy storage and marine applications our batteries are designed to be long lasting and eco-friendly BioNO batteries last significantly longer than AGM or their lead acid counterparts and are about a quarter of the weight. Visit BioNOPower.com for more information and to make sure you get on the water with something you can trust. So this episode, we ha- we're going to be talking about building confidence with new techniques on the river. It's something me and Matt, we've had this idea for quite a while. And I know people kind of struggle with it, so... We're going to give our our input on this subject, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're not experts or anything, but I feel like I can give some valuable info on this subject. Yeah, I mean, like you said, we're not experts, but I feel like we do it enough to where we can uh, give some decent insight on like what, what we do, and you know, to, to do new techniques and Well, exactly like you said, building the confidence. So where do you want to start? Well, I was first thing, like I know people, they're like, I want to go out there to catch a fish. You got to get out of that mindset first thing. I I mean, obviously you do want to catch fish, but if you want, if you really want to build confidence with the technique, you need to lock that thing in your hand and throw it until you catch a fish. There's a mindset thing there where you see other people, catching fish with that same technique tell yourself in your head that it works like you have to be it's gonna work just tell yourself it's gonna work you have to be one million percent okay with skunking when you're doing a new technique so like i said put the ego aside yeah but say you don't need to catch fit like literally so tuesday when i went out I, i i left my ned rig at home which Brad knows, like if I'm having a rough day, I'll throw the Ned rig because I know I'll get bit. Like I, I've said it before in past shows, if I if I have a Ned rig in my hand, I have not been stunk in probably three years. If I'm throwing a Ned rig, mm-hmm. just because I can catch something, and Brad will tell you also if I've had if I haven't caught a fish all day and I'm super pissed off and I catch a six incher at the end of the day, I'm happy. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Caught a fish. I'm cool. That's like my release. The fish is this. If I catch it earlier in the day, the rest of my day is just better. If I catch it later in the day, everything after that's better. So when I went out Tuesday, I was like, I want to revisit walk like a walking dog bait spook popper. I'm not bringing my net rig. I had, this is, this is the four rods. Actually, I think I took five with me, but I didn't, I ended up throwing all of them. So here's, here's the five ready. I had a G crack 
worm, segmented worm, the eight inch. So the big one. I had a mag draft. I had, uh, I went through like five different swim baits, but I had my swim bait rod. I had a crank bait, which I threw like for five minutes and I stopped throwing it. And I had a, uh, the giant dog X mm. top water spook. I tied the Rico popper on for like five minutes and I was having to fish it around faster water. So I was like, whatever I can work a spook better. So I took it back yeah. off and those are the five I had. I didn't have my confidence baits that I'm always, I did not have a jig with me. I did not have a net rig with me. I had the Gobius. That was the other one. I had a Gobius, but I didn't have that tied on. I had a jerk shads tied on, but then I was realized I'm a big old stupid idiot. And I didn't have my five and seven inch jerk sheds only at the four inch. I realized after throwing it for like 10 minutes, it wasn't working. So I cut it off and tied a gobius on just so I had it on there. I went out and for the first, I got on the water at 8.30. No, eight. It was like eight, eight or eight thirty. You were out there early. Yeah. Because you texted me when I woke up that day, I have to poop. And I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for everyone out there, so you know, when uh, if me and Brad when we're going fishing, right when we get there and we're loading up, I said, guess what, Brad? And he says, what? And I was like, I've got to poop because I never do it before I like <laughs> go to the water and it always hits me right, no matter what time. It could be at 1 p.m. Yeah. That's when I'll have to go. And then I just have to hold it the rest of the day or take a sneaky woods poop like I did Tuesday. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I got on the water like 8.15 or 8.30. I threw the giant dog X till I caught that first fish, which was at 11 15. Yeah. And I, that's literally all I was throwing. I, I think I threw, I threw, cause I had the Chad Chad tied on. I threw that in a couple eddies just here and there, mm -hmm. but the majority, I'd say 90% of my casts were the giant dog X. It's a top water spook. And it was just like Brad saying, I throw it when you get hit and be like, all right, this cast throw it when you get hit. And I said this cast 4,000 times until that one fish crushed it which was cool and it immediately built confidence back in into it to where I don't want to tie on a plopper anymore. I just want to go back out with this top water spook now because mm -hmm. I have so much confidence in the lure because I kept, kept throwing it, kept throwing it, kept throwing it. I got my cadences back. I got five or like two or three different cadences in it, depending on how fast I want to work it. And I've got them all dialed in again. That's just by throwing it and having the mindset of I'm going to catch a fish on it. I have to throw it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you got, you have to be, be okay with skunking. For sure. I mean, how 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 many months did it take me to get my very first swim bait fish last year? Four I mean, or five. I, I threw the trace for a while before it I was, got you, on it. You threw the trace for three months before you got hit on it, and that's like he went through spring throwing it, didn't get a fish on it, which is crazy. Spring, and then the first half of summer, got a fish on it, and then you moved to the Chad. Mm -hmm. And I, th I want to say you got a fish on that like a month later. S waiver at the end of last it was an it was an S waiver. It wasn't yeah. a chat. It was the S waiver, and that was like you moved from the the trace to the S waiver. And I want to say you got your first S waiver fish like a month later. Mm -hmm. Something. Like and that. then you and then you kept throwing it and didn't get bit on it again for a while, and then you got bit on it again. And then you move to the Chad Chad. And now, and it's just building that confidence over. Believe me, I throw a bunch of big swim baits. I've got a ton. Brad, I'll tell you, it took me. My first big, my first seven plus inch glide bait fish took me a year and a half to, to get Yeah. in the South. Like I was throwing it everywhere. It took me a year and a half to get bit on it. That's ridiculous, man. I, I got my first Chad Chad earlier, earlier this year at the uh, Columbus Expo. Yep. And then I think it was March when I finally got to go out and fish it March or April or something. And I think it was the end of March. It was the end of March. Uh, yeah. It was my very first Chad Shad fish. That, that was so cool. Cause I got to see him come out from behind a rock and smash it, but that makes it worth it, dude. Like fishing a lure for so long and then finally get hit on it. And it's like from that point to where I'm at now, it's like glide baits is like a staple of what I've done all year long. Now it, mm -hmm. it's so much fun. It's one of the best bite you'll ever get. Big swim baits I, are the best bites ever. I don't know why either. I don't know if it's like the satisfaction of tricking a fish into biting something big. Cause like the fight isn't like 
amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I mean, it just depends. If you get a truly big fish, like if you get a massive fish that can throat it, mm -hmm. giggity, then it's, it's a different type of fight because it's different. That fish is like, it's just different. Mm -hmm. When you get like the side swipers, which a lot of like our small mouth, they're pretty much all side swipers. They're too, yeah. their mouths are too small to actually just engulf it all the way. Not all the time. I mean, I had a trace disappear in a uh, small mouth mouth so they can do it, which was cool, but that fight was way better. Like not, it's weird. It's not that it was way better. It just felt more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Um, when they sideswipe it and stuff, if it, it just feels it's a little different because you if you hook them, if you get they get one hook in their mouth and then they're fighting and then they get hooked in the side, they typically stop. And like yeah, once that, they get that's what I'm side, referring to. Yeah, you just kind of you almost ski them in or reel them in sideways and it's weird. But the fact that you're getting the fish to attack the bait is something special, especially yeah. with all the time. Because swim baits Brad went out the other day and caught two 19 and three quarters on a chat chat. That is awesome. That is not the norm for swim baits. Swim baits are you go out and you throw it all day long. You get one fish sometime in the day and that's it. Yeah. Like it's very rare. Now is the time to go out and get your multiple fish days on a swim bait all yep. summer, even spring, especially in the winter. You can do it. I've caught them in the winter, but it's It's a grind. It just is mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. The summertime, man, it's, you're, you're definitely, you're not going to be catching very many fish on bigger baits. It's a lot harder, but can be done when it does happen. It's awesome. So, oh yeah. yeah. My, my biggest thing though, is the mindset thing of it. I know people are like, the first thing that comes to mind, I talked to somebody talking about jerk baits before I cannot get bit on a jerk bait. I don't know why. I just don't have the confidence in it. I'm like, you need to change your mindset, dude. If you see other people catching fish on it, just tell yourself it works. Eventually, you're, I'm going to catch a fish on it. Just tell yourself that over and yeah. over and over. Yeah. If if it, it's believe me, there's nothing special. If Brad goes out and he catches fish on something, and I say, "Well, I just can't catch fish on that." That that's stupid. Like I'm Shit. not trying to be like I'm not trying to be anybody out there, and I'm not trying. I'm not calling you stupid. That thought is dumb, though. If mm -hmm. people next to you on your left and right are catching fish on a bait and you can't do it, it's one of two things. And they both are the same thing. Brad's mentioned the mindset. Tell it it'll work. Tell it it'll work. Okay, you can do that. Or you can tell yourself it's not going to work the whole time and you just throw the crap out of it. <laughs> just throw it. You can sit every cast. Is this going to catch a fish? It's not going to catch a fish. But if you throw it and work it and you can say, pop, pop, pause. It's not going to catch a fish. Pop, pop, pause. This is stupid. Pop, pop, pause, and he gets all the way back in, and then you say, this is so dumb, and you cast it right the back out there. Throw it back out and just keep doing it. You're going to catch a fish on it, and the first fish you catch on it is going to be, oh, my God, I can't believe it worked, and then you're going to throw it all the time. Whenever whenever I learn a new technique, when I started learning a free rig, I, Brad will tell you I'm kind of negative. I'm just a negative person with a lot of times for the simple fact that if something doesn't pan out, I can say I knew it wouldn't work, and I don't feel as bad. Uh when I was doing the free rig, I was throwing it. I was like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Why wouldn't I just throw a Texas rig? Yeah. And I'd reel it back in and be like, this is so stupid. And I'd throw it back out and I'd flip it and I'd cast it. And I finally got hammered on it one day. And I was like, this is the best. And I had a free rig tied on for like, this was like three years ago when it was still a JDM thing and no one in the U.S. knew about it. Mm -hmm. And I had, that's all. I didn't throw Texas rigs. Like Brad, I think uh, two or three years ago, you asked me, what is that? And I was like, it's a free rig. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's like a Texas rig. He's like, oh, I didn't know you threw didn't didn't know you threw Texas. I was like, I don't. I throw a free rig. Hmm. It's it's that's all I wanted to throw. Yeah. When I caught I, what was it? Two years ago, I took a shaky head on the river, and I was like, I'm going to cast this till I catch a fish on it. And you have to say you were with me. Cast it all the way up, didn't catch anything. Cast it all the way back down, didn't catch anything. Finally, caught a fish on it, and then I had a shaky head on every river trip ever, and that's all I wanted to throw. Yeah. Like that's just that's just cast just cast it until you catch something on it and i promise you'll have the confidence will explode and if somebody's catching fish on that same bait that you can't catch something on it, it there there's a reason for that whether it be gear like 
Somebody might be using a different line than you. Well, they probably are. Somebody might be using 10 pound as opposed to you using 15 pound fluoro or whatever. Makes it sink a little bit faster. You're not in the same strike zone as that person. The cadence of the lure, you got to take into account all that stuff as to why that person's catching the fish and yep. you're not. So you do got to, you know, play, play around a little bit and experiment. But, um, I was going to say something that you were talking about just a second ago. I just casting it mindset. I don't know how much my lips shine with all this, uh, lip balm on them. That's cute. It is. <laughs> Dumb face. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're going to say, but. Oh, I, I remember now. So the, I, I'm actually struggling with the technique right now. Because I told myself earlier this year when I bought it, I was like, I'm going to catch a fish on this. I just haven't really put in the time with it. Can you guess what lure that is? You haven't put the time in with it. You know what it is. I've had a follower on it. So I know. We the just mag? Bought, yep. Mag draft. I, I, want, I want to catch a fish on it. And after seeing videos of Ryan parker doing it and how he's working it i'm like going about it completely wrong so i'm telling myself right now i'm gonna go get some freestyles i'm not gonna use the harness and i'm gonna cast it out there on a slower uh gear ratio reel and i'm gonna creep it on the bottom like he was doing in rocks that's what you so that's your if you do that you're fishing a huddleston that's where ryan learned to fish the mag draft that way mm -hmm. it's a hud it's a hud style it's a winter Huddleston style. So if you take any of those jig hooked style of soft plastics, the Defiance, the Huddlestons, if you throw it out and find rocks and let it sink all the way to the bottom, because it'll usually sink like this. Mm -hmm. And then just, what do, what do we do with spinner baits in the winter? Same thing. <laughs> you It's the same. It's the exact same retrieve. Yeah. That's throw cool. it out, let it sink and just, you're you're almost you're not even reeling it. You're like you're you're real bumping it. It's all you're doing, just enough to get it to pop, 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 and just it's just popping the bottom. That's all it's doing. Or reel a little bit faster and it'll nose up and it'll just do this the whole way back. Dude, fish hate it. I don't know why. I don't I don't get it because I'm not a biologist. It probably looks like a bait fish like on the bottom pecking at the bottom. But or it's dude, like they a hate it. fish in their territory going. Look at me. I'm swimming in your territory. What you going to do yeah. about it? You ain't going to do nothing about my big swing of butt. Like that's, I, I don't know, but whatever it is, I love it. And I hope they get more mad at it. No, but like seeing Ryan do that with a, with a mag draft. I'm like, okay, I can do that. And that was actually a good tip. What you said, comparing it to another lure that reacts the same way when fishing. I never really yep. thought about that. So that's going to help me fish the mag draft and I slow roll it I, I don't know why i didn't think about that yep uh another thing you can do this is a new technique but it's not a new technique so you used to throw this a ton i'll see if you can guess it you used to throw it a lot it's one of the best ways to throw a swim bait especially a paddle tail because it adds a little flash what did you used to throw oh yeah the uh wicked, wicked weight thunderspin yep Wicked Willow. The Wicked Willow. So Six Sense actually just came out. I don't know if they just came out, but Academy opened up here in Springfield. I went to it and they had them. I've never seen them before. Also, a, don't yeah, don't make the trip. Oh, okay. I mean, you can make the trip. It's only this fishing section is like three aisles. That's all it is. Uh, so it's not that big. I mean, they have some sunline stuff in there. So if we need a quick restock, we can get it. And they've got some stuff, but I don't know. I'd I, I would rather drive to Arcabellas if that tells you anything. So uh, but Six Sense came out with a new, like I said, I don't know if it's new or not, but a swim, a big swim bait hook, and it has a big old willow underspin. Are you pulling it up? I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, okay, I want to see it because I don't think I've seen it yet. And they're inexpensive, huh? I still got some wicked willows. I, yeah, you're right. I haven't really fished it much. I don't know why. I just, I yeah. I well, I haven't either. I have a ton of them, and I haven't really fished them at all. But yeah, there there was 
one point in the year where I was like, if you're not, oh yeah, it's the exact same thing. <laughs> it re- it really is, but it's just bigger. Yeah. So you know, you get a freestyle, you put the three eight six ounce, uh, three eight or three eight ounce six ot. It just gives it a little bit more. Oh, you know, on the difference. mag draft. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go on the mag, and then you know, bump it off the bottom, and then bring it up a little bit so that's just tickling the bottom. Hmm, that's a good I'm idea. I'm gonna do that. I've got some. I've got some freestyle mag drafts and the black and white or the black and gray and then the uh pearl. So yeah. I'm starting to think like the freestyle mag drafts the way to go. Like the one with the harness. I heard uh Josh Shrinko talking about it on a podcast recently. Like it's they're they're worse for the fish because it can graze the gills and stuff like that. So yes. Um it's harder to fish those slower, I feel like. Well, it's because you're gonna get hung up. Yeah, I was about to say they they the under slung treble can get hung. Um now I'm not gonna talk about it on here. Swim bait guys it they would be like, Oh yeah, we all do that, but I'm not gonna give up a buddy secrets who's texting us both right now. But uh <laughs> I'll show you a rig. It's an old school swim bait rig for like a freestyle. I'll show you a rig you can tie on so you get a little bit better hookup ratio too. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, I need to go to actually Cabela's has mag drafts. I saw them there last time I was there. They have a ton of freestyles. That's like yeah. their only saving grace is they have they have a bunch of the the freestyle coal shads. Uh, I heard they actually swim a little bit better than Maggie's do. Mm. Uh, I've heard it. I haven't thrown I have the coal shad here too with the harness, but I don't throw it. I threw the one with the harness and it kind of reminded me of the maggot swam better. Like I could swim a little bit faster. Yeah. But, but, uh, I knew I want to get some of those freestyles too, but also there's a lot of things, but anyway, back to what we're actually talking about, um, building confidence on the, with new techniques in the river. It's, it's ultimately it's time on the water. Like, to build new to build confidence, you have to go out and throw that what you're throwing. Mm-hmm. And what I would say, what I like to do, I've got three spots, not river, build confidence in baby steps. I've got three ponds that I can go to and I could put a little bit of smell good on my toe and catch a fish out of it because they eat everything. <laughs> so take that lure that you have no confidence in and go fish it at some of your honey holes. Catch fish, catch fish, catch fish. Get the cadence down. Find out how well, how do these fish like it. I'm not going to say it's always going to transfer, but then when you go to the river, which can be daunting, especially if you don't fish a lot, you don't know where everything is. You're just throwing at possible spots. You already have the confidence on the lure that's going to catch fish. Or if it's a big swim bait, you've got follows or something. You've, you've seen fish interested in the bait. Now you go to the river and throw in those other high percentage areas and continue to build off those baby steps that you did yeah it's a good idea I, I i've thought about that too like there's one spot where i could probably go and catch fish on a mag draft pretty easy but large mouth but I yeah i want to go there and do that i know you don't like i don't i know that and for everyone out there i small mouth or king I'll catch largemouth if I have no other choice, but smallmouth are key. I'm not Brad. I won't like to stay home and not catch largemouth. I'll go catch largemouth. I don't care. But smallmouth are better. It's the best fighting fish on earth. I would be in a Polly Mary's relationship with smallmouth if I could. My wife was down for that, but she's not, and I'm not either because that's just not how life works. But start if your pond has largemouth in it, or if you're down south and that's all you got, or you got spotted bass or something, go to a honey hole and just baby step that confidence don't get overconfident you go to your honey hole where they'll eat everything like a piece of lettuce on a string and be like oh this i I know exactly what i'm doing after you catch 30 fish because they eat everything that's your that's your new bottom is the confidence you built from your honey hole and then you go up Mm -hmm. and you start going to lakes or your rivers and you start throwing in the high percentage areas you're not going to get the same hookup ratios you did there for the simple fact there's not it's a different environment but you have that confidence of knowing I'm not going to this blind and just throwing a lure and having no idea what's going to happen. Like you already have some of that confidence. That's your new baseline. Then you move up and then you move up. Same thing with swim baits. I tell people, if you want to get into big swim baits, go buy some four inch swim baits, soft body swim baits, throw those. Those will get eaten by everything. 
mm-hmm. catch fish on that, happy about it, go to a five. Those will get eaten by a lot of stuff. You have confidence, so they're eating a five, they'll probably eat a six. Then you throw a hard body six inch trace, multi jointed, or a big soft like a mag draft. Throw that, those start getting eaten. Now you're in the big boys, seven inch glides, nine inch defiance. You're throwing your big, big baits. You have all those stepping stone confidence to get you the big boys. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's that concept. Yeah. I like that. I want to uh, catch one on the defiance someday too. That'd be cool. Yeah, dude, me too. I've <laughs> I've thrown it twice. Uh, it was up north. And I counted that sucker down to 35 feet. And I still, to this day, believe I got slammed. Yeah, and there's, I didn't, didn't there's nothing the on the bottom the, there. It's a soft bottom. So I know. I mean, I and it was like I hit a rock. So I think something slammed it, and I set the hook, and I pulled it away from it. I still believe that's exactly what happened. Because it was like, at 30 feet, my rod tip on my extra heavy rod just pop. Like, dude, I, I saw it and I was, I wasn't really paying attention because it was, yeah. I was having a rougher day and I threw it and I saw, all I saw was my rod just boom. And right when I saw it, I was like, like you at uh, Wisconsin, when that top water fish hit and you're like, I don't know what to do. Sick. Same thing. Like it, it just popped it. And I was like, yeah. Oh, and I reeled up the slack I had and it, it just wasn't there anymore. She was gone. But yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I know we're, we're all guilty of this. Like, you start throwing a new technique and you know, you throw it for like 10 minutes and then you put it away. It's like, Mm -hmm. you can't, you can't do that. Just keep throwing it. If you want to really want to catch a fish on that thing, you just got to keep throwing it. And it helps. Like I've noticed in my mind, at least it helps to kind of visualize what the bait is doing under the water. Like when I first started fishing the jerk shads and stuff, you know, you kind of like work it right next to your boat, just to see what the action does kind of put it in your mind and visualize what it's doing a little bit deeper and what it does when it hits rocks. And, you know, that gives you a little bit more of that mentality side to kind of help you catch more fish with it too. Well, yeah. I mean, what, what do they say? What do we always say about lures? Most lures are designed to catch fishermen, yep. not designed to catch fish. It's the same thing as when they say you go to a job interview and you want to, you want to look good, you know, or how you say in the Marine Corps, if Ryan, if you're listening to this or any other, my other vets, before you go out on patrol or go do anything, we'd always say you would go over a gear check and stuff and be like, look good, kill good. <laughs> if your gears, if your gears straight away, if you're straight away and you're, you're, you know, you're good to go. The mentality is, well, all my gear's straight, my optics good. My rifle's clean. I'm topped up. I'm going to kill good. Mm-hmm. It's the same concept. If your bait looks good and you see it and you're like, man, that action looks awesome. There's even more confidence you're building. Cause you throw it out and you're like, man, that action looks so good. This is going to get slammed. And that's literally you, what, yeah. You, you'll even see that with like the professional fishermen and even like professional athletes and football and basketball and stuff. Like the guys on the very top, they just exude confidence because they know mm-hmm. that, what they what they do can't be stopped yeah they also have ffs though yeah that's true too but unless you're maddie wong because i mean he has ffs too but if you watch some of his videos he is the exact example of what you just said he'll go out there he's got confidence he's throwing big swim baits he's like oh there's a hump right here i'm gonna throw it out there and this is just gonna get slurped and then it's like his videos 20 minutes later and he's like maybe i should leave this spot and then he gets hammered on it and he's like, see, I told you, you just keep throwing it. It's going to be right there, blah, blah. I mean, that's that's exactly what you just said. Embodied in a person is Matty Wong or Taku. Taku, everything he throws is smaller, but you'll see him. He'll throw bait, and if that's what he wants to throw, he just throws it all day long. Yeah. And he'll just wait till he gets hammered on it. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, it's cool, but I don't, I don't know. It. I like this topic, though. I mean, it kind of like – it helps me for sure because now I, I I have a I have a desire to go out there and tie the mag draft on now. Yeah, I was, it, it it definitely it definitely helps when you like you said, and I it's it's when you visualize even when you're home and you want to try a new technique. 
start thinking about it, watch videos about it, learn that's about it. Do, man. That's, that's all just, do. yeah, learn like you learn before I ever try anything. I, I watch YouTube is a great resource. Well, I don't watch the YouTube. I visualize baits in my head. It's so weird. Like I'll be sitting there driving for work and I picture like a jackhammer in the water. I'm dead serious. Yeah. I'm just like, that looks so cool. I'm sitting there thinking about it. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you've, if you're going to try a technique and you've never done it, you can't, you, you can visualize it. But if you watch yeah. a video and you see it in the water, tactical bassin, they have so many underwater videos. I'm pretty sure they have a scuba license because they have every, if you want to learn how swim baits look underwater, they have a whole 28 minute video that shows like every major swim bait on the market underwater. And it shows the glide. It shows the fast swim. It shows the twitches. You can walk them. It shows all of it. And it shows fish reacting to it too. You can take that. Cool. I watched the video and then you're Brad driving to work. And then you start thinking about it nonstop in your head. And then you start thinking about what gear I'm going to throw it on. And then you tie it up at your house and then you go fishing three days later and you have so much anticipation to throw it and you just keep throwing it, throwing it, throwing it. And then you get bit. It's the best feeling you've ever had in your whole life. It yep. just is. Yep. It's just like the whole, the whole build up to that moment. It's just like, Oh, it's awesome. I'm addicted, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say something, but I'm not going to. So, uh, it's a lot of build up. Uh, the crowning accomplishment crowning moment in your life um so anyway yeah what else do you have on this brad i, I really don't have much man just just want to reiterate it reiterate all right put the ego aside if you don't catch a fish who cares man i know i'm not gonna make fun of you who i will cares? but it's okay no i'm just kidding i won't either and that's uh, it's funny you say that two weeks ago when we were coming back from broodstock is you were driving and like always i don't ever really have time to think when me and brad go anywhere because we just talk the whole time we're literally like girls it's the only person in my whole life including my wife that i do this with i don't talk to my wife all the time when we're driving i she listens to music and i listen to a book but when me and brad are going somewhere we talk the entire time. It's usually about the trip going there or the trip coming back and then just stupid stuff. But I was thinking in my head, I was like, man, I think the reason I get so pissed off on the water is because I have to catch a fish. I have like, there's the ego in it. I have to, because people have said, you know, people tell Brad, oh, he's a good fisherman. I've had people say, oh yeah, you catch them all the time. You smoke them all the time. So I've got, almost got to the point, especially now that I'm recording Dude, if I go out here and try to make a video and don't catch any fish, dude, it's just, I'm, I suck. I'm just yeah. terrible. I've you know, done that. <laughs> I, oh, I know. Like, but I need to get away from that. Like, I know, Brad, you carry me all the time. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I've got that in there somewhere on the podcast. Uh, I, I hope you listen. I hope. But anyway, um, I need to get the ego out of it. Like, I need to go out, and if I don't catch a fish, I don't care. I need to have my winter mindset all year long. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I just couldn't think of the words. Yeah, the <laughs> winter. If you have a winter mindset, you go out in December and you go out and you're like, if I don't catch a fish, I don't catch a fish. I just want to be out. Mm -hmm. it, have that mindset. Everything ends up putting itself together. Yeah, and it's so. Jeff Little mentioned that when we were talking about winter fishing earlier this year on a podcast. The mental mindset makes you a better angler the rest of the year. <clears throat> Yep. That's all I got though. So for whatever it's worth, probably not much, but hopefully I it helps somebody, man. Not hopefully someone out there, you get some words of wisdom from both of us slow river and, rats. And if you do end up catching a fish on something you've never caught, uh, post the picture and tag us. The world needs, the world needs more fishing pictures, guys. I know there's a ton of fishing accounts out there and everybody's just posting the same old uh, pro staff like post go go to go get your kayak here or whatever I don't know whatever go to big chungus baits for the best baits on the market <laughs> yeah stop doing that and post some fish pictures man like that's what I want to see I want to see fish pictures I just so everyone knows so you can do the pro staff thing at the same time as posting a fish pick. 
Yeah. I know there's guys like there's guys I follow. They never really post their fish pictures. I'm like, why don't you post them, dude? You catch good ones. I want to see. Even if you don't, even if you don't catch good ones, post the pictures. Even if they're 12 inch fish, just post them. Because I've caught some 12 inch fish. They're not as big, but obviously they're not as big as some of my bigger fish. But some of them look way cooler. Mm -hmm. Like they just look cool. Like the colors on them. Uh, there was a couple Kentucky spot, or there was a couple small smallmouth spots. I don't, we still don't know what they were, but smallmouth that have a spot in their mouth, they looked way different than smallmouth here do. And I didn't take pictures of them because I was like, it's a small fish. And then I kicked myself the whole rest of the day. I was like, I should have taken pictures of all those fish and just post them. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Post, post the pics, tag us. We will share them out and we'll love to see them. It's awesome. Yep. But anyway, with that said, my phone is blowing up thanks to Ryan Parker. <laughs> and Matt Souders. I've been texting him the whole time about big swim bait hooks. It's weird we're talking about it because we just talked about it. Yeah. But anyway, that's all we got for our show this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>